Hello, hi guys. Um, I wanted to do a live session with this. I wanted to go live on Instagram and or maybe on YouTube with this video, but um, I tried to go live on YouTube, but I'm not able to yet because I have to verify my account, which takes a day, but I really want to go ahead and get this out. So, um, and then with Instagram I, uh, live, I don't know how long you can do a live session these days. Back in the day, it was only an hour, but I don't have time for that. Um, so I just decided to do a regular video. And then once I get my YouTube live squared away, then I'll start going live on YouTube with these videos. But anyway, um, that's neither here nor there. I wanted to talk to you guys about, um, this is a video that I have been wanting to do for a while now. I've had people on social media, um, contact me about fibroids and spirituality um so from the title of this video you do know that this is about spirit spouses and um how they can contribute to or affect fibroids so that's what i wanted to talk to you this is what i want to talk about today um and i just want to tell you about my experience with a spirit spouse or a, or as I like to call them, a spirit that calls itself my spouse because it's not my spouse. Anyway, um, let me just pray real quick before we get into this. I uh, just feel the need to pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for um, putting this message in my heart so that I can share with your people about this experience so that they too can get free and delivered, Lord. Um Thank you so much for your infinite wisdom, Father. Thank you for giving us the power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and all the powers of the devil. Not some, but all the powers of the devil. And that nothing by any means shall hurt us. Thank you for giving us the authority to be able to take up serpents and cast out devils. Thank you, Father, for giving us that power. And thank you for your word that says it is through knowledge that the just shall be delivered. I pray that you use me, Father, to, to provide knowledge to your people so that they can de get delivered just as I have been delivered. In Jesus' name, we, I pray and we thank you. Amen. Okay, so um, let me just tell you guys about my experience with um, a spirit that calls itself my spouse. Let me put on a little chapstick because a little naked without it but uh okay so i don't know if you guys follow me on social media or not oh goodness mm -hmm. okay <laughs> that's better i don't know if you guys follow me on social media or not but um my instagram is that nick chick that nick chick i'll link it in the description box and so i've been sharing my journey with fibroids on social media i also been sharing it on my website which is sandrell's naturalworld.com you guys can go there and check out uh, my blog about that but um i have been sharing my journey on social media for uh, the longest now and um I have recently had surgery for fibroids and I've been answering a lot of questions on social media about spirituality and its connection to fibroids. And so I have found that um, fibroids is most definitely connected with spirituality. And so let me just back up and tell you guys my story. So I was diagnosed with fibroids in October 2015. And it just seemed like it came out the blue. I mean, it just came up so suddenly. I'm a small person, so I've never really had issues with having a gut or anything like that. And it wasn't until 2015 when uh, my now husband, actually back then, we were just engaged to get married, but we moved into our uh, home together. And we, uh, we moved into our home together in when did we do this that was in 2014 when we moved into our home together um november 2014 so uh may 2015 i got married my husband and i got married and by i will say summertime i noticed that um my body was just i had been dealing with health health issues especially reproductive issues beforehand before we got married anyway but 
by summertime, I noticed that I began to develop a bit of a gut. And so normally what I would do is have a, um, a uh, what do you call it, a colonic, which helps to flush your large intestine of any impacted fecal matter that may be in your body. So, um, you know, that's, that's, that's my journey. I'm a healthy girl, natural healing via food, using food as medicine, nutrition, if you will. And so, um, so I would have a, uh, a, why I just said it, a colonic to help flush out that, that fecal matter, the excess fecal matter, because then I had constipation issues as well. But I noticed that even with the colonic, my stomach was just huge. It just would not go down no matter what. Um, and so I'm just like, okay, that's odd. This was maybe around, and I'm just guessing here, not guessing, but just trying to remember around the time. This was, it was definitely warm outside. It was definitely maybe around June, July, something like that. And then a couple of months go by and then my husband is like, are you pregnant? And I'm like, I don't think so. I don't think so. And he was like, you know, why is your stomach getting so much bigger? And then, he, you know, we both were laying in the bed just looking at my stomach. He was like, and it's hard too. And I was like, yeah, this is weird. It just seemed like it popped up out the blue, you guys. So, um, and so, uh, it, or it just seemed like it got bigger out the blue. And I'm looking at my stomach, I'm like, this is kind of odd. So, uh, I hadn't been to the doctor, to the gynecologist to get myself checked out in quite a while. You know, I'd been really slacking in that area. So I decided that it was time to go, you know, just get a routine checkup, get my annual, whatever. And I didn't have insurance at the time. And so uh, I so I had kind of had to go to this kind of like, I ain't going to say rinky dink doctor, but it was she wasn't she, she wasn't who I have now. And so as soon as I laid on the examination table, she looked at my stomach and the disgust on her face. I will never forget that. She was just like, God, do you have uterine fibroids? And I was like, I don't even know what that is. I was just like, uh, I don't know. I don't know what fibroids are. What What is that? She was just like, it's just, uh, you know, she just kind of told me a bit about it or whatever. She was like, I'm going to. Um, I'm going to refer you to this over here to get x-ray, you know, or to get uh, an ultrasound to make sure that, you know, you don't have fibroids because I honestly think you do and they're huge from the look of it. So this, I, this was like, you know, October around this time because October 2015 is when I was diagnosed. So this was about that time. So I go, I got the ultrasound. And I'm just looking, it was just a terrible experience. I have videos on this. You guys can look at all the videos in my YouTube about this. So, so, um, I leave there and then uh, a couple of weeks later, maybe like a week later, I go back, uh, for a follow up and, uh, the doctor, you know, it's like, yeah, it's just as I expected, you know, or I suspected you do have uterine fibroids and, they're pretty big. The largest is about the size of a large grapefruit. And I was like, I was just devastated. You know, I, I didn't understand how fibro, how, how I could just pop up out the blue. You know, I never had any fibroid issues that I knew of. Um, of course, the fibroids always, they, they could have always been there. But uh, because I never got an ultrasound or anything like that, you know, and even when I went for my annual physicals, the doctors never palpated. They never said anything as far as if I'd had fibroids or not. So, you know, I was just so hurt because I felt like it popped up out the blue and it kind of did like the year of 2015, because I remember the year before in 2014, my husband, and I went on a cruise that summer and my stomach was flat, completely flat. I would lay in bed and just look at my stomach and how flat it was. And it wasn't until I got married and moved in with my husband. And um, and we also live in front of a lake, uh, which I'm going to bring that up later. But uh, we live in front of we have a Lakeview uh, place. And so, um, yeah, so it wasn't until... 2015 is when things just started happening so fast. It, it, you know, I'm just like, where did this come from? Uh, it, it, it was almost like I didn't have any warning. It just popped up. 
So, of course, it was around this time and I wasn't very, um, I wasn't saved back then. I wasn't very spiritual or anything like that. So, um, I'd already had issues with acne. Uh, so I started, you know, I was already addressing my diet to help my skin and, uh, also to help some of the reproductive, uh, issues that I, that I was having. I was having some reproductive issues. I was having issues with BV. I was having issues with, uh, chronic reoccurring yeast infections. I was having issues with so many things. Um, and once I was diagnosed with fibroids, it just got worse. I mean, um, I would have just spontaneous bleeding, um, bleeding while bleeding, uh, during intercourse, pain during intercourse. Um, it was just, it was just so much that I was already going through at the, at the time. And when I was diagnosed with fibroids, it was just like the cherry on top. So, um, oh my goodness, you guys. So, okay. That's how this story starts. So I got saved, you know, I started bringing God into my healing journey around 2016 is when I started going back to church because my husband would go to church and I, I would, you know, sometimes go with him. Sometimes I wouldn't, but I started actually going, you know, by myself. So, um, I would go, I would get, I would get educated as much as I could. I would fill my spirit up because I grew up in the church, but I got away from it. You know, I, I kind of, as so many people do, you know, straight away from my upbringing, um, as I was growing up, you know, in my twenties and early thirties, I kind of swayed away from it because, you know, when you're a kid, you're forced to go to church or I was every Sunday, including some days in between and stay there all freaking day. So by the time I got older, I was like, I'm going to make my own decisions as to whether or not I'm going to church as to whether or not I'm going to, you know, just be all in, you know, Christianity and and just how much devotion like that's my decision and it really should be your decision so I didn't go as much I didn't go at all at, at a certain point so by 2016 I started going back to church I started um filling my spirit back up because I don't know something just drove me back to church uh, probably my husband my husband was definitely one of the, he was definitely, uh, you know, telling me, okay, you need to go back to church. You need to, you know, you need God. Because at one point I renounced God. I was like, I don't think God exists. I know. I, I, yeah, pretty much. I, I was like, I don't think Jesus exists. I don't believe in Jesus. You know, I, I believe in God, but I don't believe in Jesus. I don't believe someone came here and walked on water and, you know, did us like, I don't believe in all that. And those were some of the darkest moments of my life. So, um, I ended up going back to church and I got saved again. And, um, and, um, so this was in 2016 is when I started going back to church. I started getting saved and, um, I was still addressing like physically my diet, trying, struggling, trying to get it under control because anyone who's ever tried to lose weight, anyone who's ever tried to address their diet and, take it from a standard American diet to where you eat anything to a maybe plant-based because I was plant-based for about two years to a plant-based diet to one of a healthy healing diet knows that it's hard to do. It's very hard to do. And I mean, so I was struggling trying to do that to clear my skin, to address fibroids because when I was diagnosed in 2015, I, I knew that surgery wasn't something I was just going to hop into. I was like, no, you know, I'm, um, I'm, I'm going to heal this naturally, um, with food, with herbs and supplements. I'm not going to do surgery. I'm going to heal myself. You know, that was my mentality. That is what I would actually say to myself. Um, so here we are in 2016. I started going back to church. I get saved again. And, uh, by the time 2017 come around, you know, I'm still, going hard with, um, my Christianity. I'm learning more about healing and the Bible and how, uh, the healing scriptures and stories in the Bible about how, um, how Jesus came and healed. And at that, you know, I, by then I was 
totally on Jesus bandwagon at this point. I mean, I'm completely sold out for Christ <laughs> at this point. Um, by the time 2018 come around, I joined this program and you, I have videos, like I said, in my YouTube, um, you can, you guys can watch that or I'll link it in the description box. So it make it easier for you to find. So I joined this, um, this healing program for uterine fibroids. And so, um, this was in, we started January the 1st, 2018. And, uh, like a week later, because usually in the church, in January, we do like a Daniel fast at church. The whole church is on a Daniel fast. And back then, that was very, very difficult for me because, you know, even though I'd been eating healthy-ish, I was trying. I wasn't really dedicated as, as I am now. You know, I was I was still struggling to get those dietary habits under control. So a Daniel fast was hard for me to do. And so, um, you know, so... Um, Instead of doing the Daniel fast with my church, actually for the first week in January, I did the Daniel fast with the church, but then the nutritional program that I joined for fibroids, they went on a two week water fast. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do, instead of doing a Daniel fast for the entire month of January with the church, I'm going to do one week Daniel fast this first week with the church. And then the next two weeks, I'm going to do the water fast with the nutritional group. Uh, because the nutritional group started the water fast the second week in January 2018. Stick with me. So, okay, I do the water fast in January 2018. And at this point, I'm praying because at this point, the church is on fire. They're teaching about generational curses and how to break them, how to recognize them. They're teaching about witchcraft and how this stuff is real because a lot of people don't believe in witchcraft at I knew of witchcraft growing up because my dad would talk about it. My mom would talk about it. But I, when I got older, I kind of got away from it because I thought it was just a myth. I'm like, witchcraft, you know, that's just something to scare people. That stuff isn't real. And so uh, the church is teaching about witchcraft and how covenants are made and how altars are used to make those covenants, how witches... Witches are real, how warlocks are we real, wizards are real, sorcerers, sorcerers, how these people who uh, operate in the occult are real and the things that they do, how this stuff is really real. So I am just eating it up. I mean, I'm totally engrossed in these teachings. And so they shared, the church shared with us some prayers. They gave us a prayer booklet of uh, the, the kind of prayers you can pray and scriptures you can use to break to begin to break those ancestral and, and generational curses and how most of us need to go on a fast in order to do so. And since I was already on this two week water fast, which was at that time, the most extreme fast that I'd ever done in my life. It was just two weeks of nothing but water, coconut water, water. Um, and I actually have a video about that, of how I did that. So uh, you guys can check that out too. I'll link it. So, um, so I'm like, okay, well, since I'm on this fast, let me start praying some of these prayers then, because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm noticing that this, the sickness that I've been dealing with for years, you know, I'm starting to get educated about how God doesn't want us sick. Satan curses, Satan curses us with sickness, not God. A, people, a lot of things get blamed on God. We blame a lot of things on God. God, why did you let my son die? Why did you let my daughter die? Why did you put this sickness on me? And God don't do that. He wants you to be blessed. He wants you to be whole. He wants you to be happy. He wants you to prosper. He wants you to thrive. God don't do that. The reason why sickness come upon us is because of either our actions or the actions of our ancestors. That's it. God don't curse us. Now, God put certain rules into play. He put certain rules um, into um formation and it's in the word that if you break any of these rules this is what's going to happen and one in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28 God talked to the Israelites and told them uh actually I'm gonna pull that up that's one thing that I do with um this teaching I want to back up everything I say with scripture so that you guys can know that I'm not you know just saying stuff that is actual scripture here here we go. Deuteronomy 28. 
if you fully obey the Lord, Deuteronomy 28, I'm starting at uh, verse one and I'm going to read. It's, it's quite lengthy. So stick with me. Okay. And this is the uh, new, um, what version is this? This is the new international version. This is not the King James version. I, I want to read from the King James version, but um, if you guys can go back and read the King James version, which is the version I, I always stick with, unless I get stuck and I need a little bit more revelation, then I'll, you know, read the new international version. But for the most part, I stick with the King James version of things, but it's the new international version. So let me go ahead and read it. It says, uh, this is God speaking to the Israelites after he's delivered them from uh, Pharaoh, after they were in bondage for 400 years and he sent Moses to deliver them. So this is where they are now. If you fully obey the Lord, your God, and carefully follow all his commands, I give you today, the Lord, your God will set you high above all the nations on earth. All these blessings will come upon you and accompany you if you obey the lord your god you will be blessed in the city blessed in the country the fruit of your womb will be blessed and the crops of your land and the young of your livestock the cows of your herds and the lambs of your flocks your basket and your need and trial will be blessed you will be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out the lord will grant that the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you they will come at you from one direction but flee from you in seven the Lord will send a blessing on your barns and on everything you put your hand to. Um, the Lord, your God, will bless you in the land he has given you. The Lord will establish you as his holy people, as he promised you on oath, if you keep the commands of your Lord, your God, and walk in his ways. Then all the peoples on earth will see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they will fear you. The Lord will grant you abundant prosperity in the fruit of your womb, the young, the young of your livestock and the crops of your ground in the land he swore to your forefathers to give to you. The Lord will open the heavens, the storehouse of his bounty to send rain on your land in season and to bless all the work of your hands. You will lend to many nations, but will borrow from none, meaning you won't be in debt. The Lord will make you the head and not the tail. If you pay attention to the commands of the Lord, your God, that I give you this day and carefully follow them, you will always be at the top, never at the bottom. Do not turn aside from any of the commands I give you today, to the right or to the left, following other gods and serving them. However, if you do not obey the Lord, your God, and do not carefully follow all his commands and decrees I'm giving you today, all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. You'll be cursed in the city and cursed in the country. Your basket and your kneading trial will be cursed. The fruit of your womb will be cursed. And the crops of your land and the cows of your herds and the lambs of your flocks. You'll be cursed when you come in and cursed when you go out. The Lord will send on you curses, confusion, and rebuke in everything you put your hand to. Until you are destroyed and come to sudden ruin because of the evil you have done in forsaking him. The Lord will plague you with diseases until he has destroyed you from the land you are entering to possess. The Lord will strike you with wasting disease, with fever and inflammation, with scorching heat and drought, with blight and mildew, which will plague you until you perish. The sky over your head will be bronze, the ground beneath you iron. The Lord will turn the rain of your country into dust and powder, meaning um, it won't be any any rain to uh, for your for your fruit and veggies to grow and stuff. It will come down from the skies until you are destroyed. Oh, maybe they didn't mean that. Mm -hmm. The Lord will cause you to be defeated before your enemies. You you will come at them from one direction, but flee from them in seven. So basically, the opposite of the blessings is what you will encounter. And you will become a thing of horror to all the kingdoms on earth. Your carcass will be food for all the birds of the air and the beasts of the earth. And there will be no way to frighten them away. The Lord will afflict you with the boils of Egypt and with tumors, festering soils and the itch from which you cannot be cured. The Lord will afflict you with madness, blindness and confusion of mind. 
At midday, you will grope about like a blind man in dark. You will be unsuccessful in everything you do. Day after day, you will be oppressed and robbed with no one to rescue you. You will be pledged to be married to a woman, but another will take her and ravish her. You will build a house, but you will not live in it. You will plant a vineyard, but you will not even begin to enjoy its fruit. Your oxen will be slaughtered before your eyes, but you will eat none of it. Your donkey will be forcibly taken from you and you will not be and will not be returned. Your sheep will be given to your enemies and no one will rescue them. Your sons and daughters will be given to another nation and you will wear out your eyes watching them day after day, powerless to lift a hand. The people that you do not know will eat what your land and labor produce. And you will have nothing but cruel oppression all of your days. Sound like slavery, doesn't it? The sights you see will drive you mad. The Lord will afflict your knees and legs with painful boys that cannot be cured, spreading from the soles of your feet to the top of your head. The Lord will drive you and the king you set over you. The Lord will drive you and the king you set over you to a nation unknown to you or your fathers. There you will worship other gods, gods of wood and stone. You will become a thing of horror and an object of scorn and ridicule to all the nations where the Lord will drive you. You will sow much seed in the field, but you will harvest little because locusts will devour it. You will plant vineyards and cultivate them, but you will not drink the wine or gather the grapes because worms will eat them. You will have olive trees throughout your country, but you will not use the oil because the olives will drop off. You have sons and daughters, but you will not keep them because they will go into captivity or prison or slavery. Swarms of locusts will take over all your trees and crops of your land. The alien who lives among you will rise above you higher and higher, but you will sink lower and lower. He will lend to you, but you will not lend to him. He will be the head, but you will be the tail. All the curse, all these curses will come upon you. They will pursue you and overtake you until you are destroyed because you did not obey the Lord, your God, and observe the commands and decrees that he gave you. It's a very, very long chapter, and I'm not going to read the rest because I've already read enough. So basically, you guys read Deuteronomy chapter 28. It tells about all the curses and all the blessings that uh, you can encounter as a result of um, disobeying the Lord. Now, okay, now if you go back to Deuteronomy 5, let's go back to Deuteronomy 5. Um, This is chapter 1. Moses summoned all Israel and said, Hear, O Israel, the decrees and laws I declare in your hearing today. Learn them and be sure to follow them. The Lord our God made a covenant with us at Horeb. It was not with our fathers that the Lord made this covenant, but with us, with all of us who are alive here today. The Lord spoke to you face to face out of the fire on the mountain. At that time, I stood between the Lord and you to declare to you the word of the Lord because you were afraid of the fire and did not go up the mountain. And he said, And the Lord said, he, it says, and he said, who is he? He is the Lord. And he said, I am the Lord, your God, who brought, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them for I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God. Punishing the children for the sins of the fathers to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. But showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. So with all that, all that to say, these are some of the scriptures that I began learning about and learning about covenants ancestral and generational covenants now i know i read in deuteronomy how it said that the lord will inflict upon you all of these curses if you disobey his his commandments and um as far as that like i said 
The Lord wants us to be blessed. This is the Old Testament, but still, the Lord wants us to be blessed. He wants us to be happy and prosperous. He wants us to He wants to bless the works of our hands. He wants to bless the fruit of our body, our womb. He want to He want to do all of this stuff for us. But the reason that it is prevented is because of our doing or our parents and grandparents and ancestors doing. Didn't I tell you it sounded like a lot like slavery? I would go there, but that's another teaching for another time because a lot of people are watching this and they're probably, you know, have gone back to a lot of the things that our ancestors used to practice. Um, it, it, with African Americans, they were heavily, heavily, heavily into witchcraft. And even the word says it. If you're into witchcraft and um, if you worshiping if you're into witchcraft you're worshiping other gods you're not worshiping the god of abraham the, the god of jacob you're not worshiping that god you're worshiping some other god you're worshiping the devil basically the evil that's what you're worshiping and so in the, the scripture that i just read that says do not have any other gods above me for i the god and my jealous god punishing the children down to the fourth generation for the sins of uh for the sins of the father or the sins of the ancestors that stuff is real. And I learned just, I began, my eyes began to become enlightened as to how that stuff truly affect our lives. Because like I said, I got away from the church for a long time that, you know, I didn't realize that, hey, maybe all this stuff is happening to me because I'm under a curse. And no one ever wants to think of themselves as being under a curse. Like I didn't even want to think that that stuff was real, but it one I found out that it one hundred percent truly is real, and that I was truly living under a curse and didn't realize it. So I began to do a little investigation. I began to interview my mom. I began to interview my older sisters, my siblings, uh, other family members, and I found out that there was definite witchcraft in my family. As uh, my grandmother and great grandmother used to practice this stuff, but they didn't realize that they what they were doing. Witchcraft is so sneaky and so, you know, it's, it's so subtle that you don't even realize that you're practicing witchcraft a lot of the time. Because one of the things that my mother told me that my great grandmother did, because um, I asked her, I said, Mom, do you know if anyone ever practiced witchcraft in our family? And she was like, witchcraft? And because a lot of times people, you know, the older generation they don't like talking about that kind of stuff, which is stuff that honestly we need to know about so we can try to break those covenants and those curses. And uh, she was like, no one in my family practiced witchcraft. I was like, okay, was witchcraft mentioned uh, or anything like that? Like, what are some things? And I, I just got creative. I'm like, what are some of the old remedy things that, you know, grandma or you or, or you, that you guys used to do for us or on us, you know, things like that. And she was like, well... My grandmother used to sprinkle cayenne pepper all around her house and, you know, but she was doing it to get rid of witches because she said that her neighbor next door was trying to curse her. And I was like, mom, that's witchcraft. Grandma was practicing witchcraft. And she was like, how do you, what, you know, people like that. Well, I ain't gonna see people like that, but people don't realize that witchcraft just because you're not dancing around a fire with a bunch of paint on your face and chanting um that you know that doesn't necessarily mean that you're not operating in witchcraft a, a ouija board is witchcraft horoscopes are witchcraft it's so much witchcraft around here that we've all been practicing and living in and so long that we we don't realize that we're not only cursing ourselves, but cursing our children and our grandchildren and our great grandchildren. So, you know, um, but I learned that there was definitely witchcraft in my family. I learned that way, but I also learned another way that there was witchcraft in my family. When I was on that water fast and I'm praying these prayers to break these covenants and because I knew, I knew that there was witchcraft in my blood. I just knew it. I don't, I just knew it. So I began to pray and, you know, I'm on this fast and I began to dream. That's when my dreams really became unlocked. I, you know, I, I began to really, really dream and I discovered just how important my dreams 
are our dreams are god speaks to us in dreams i'm going to do another teaching on that but for right now this is about the spirit uh, spirits that call themselves spouses let me get to that so um i began to dream and i began to have these reoccurring dreams of me being back in my childhood home the home that i grew up in uh the old elementary school that i used to go to the high school that i used to go to i had dreams about me getting ready to graduate but i never would graduate um or or things like that i had um and then i also began to have these sexual dreams just I began to have all of these dreams, dreams that didn't really make any sense to me because, you know, I, I didn't know what I was seeing back to back to back to back to back night after night after night. It got to a point where I couldn't close my eyes without dreaming, even if I'm, you know, tired and I just so happen to doze off. I'm immediately in a dream and nine times out of 10, they were evil dreams of being chased or something. But what stood out to me the most was uh, me being in my childhood home and sexual dreams. And so I'm like, why do I keep having these dreams where, you know, I'm having sex in a dream. And sometimes uh, it was my husband and sometimes it was people I didn't even know. And I'm just like, I don't like this. Does this mean that I'm loosey goosey? You know, what does this mean? I, and so I went and searched um for dream interpretations because i be something told me that this is important i need to i need to look into this because i kept having the dreams back to back to back to back to back to back and so something told me i need to look into this and i begin to remember the teachings of my childhood one of my favorite teachings in the bible was of joseph uh the coat of many colors joseph and his brothers that was one of my favorite bible stories when i was a kid and joseph uh was a dreamer he had several dreams and um when he was younger he told his brothers and his family his dreams and all of them made fun of him and scorned him for his for his dreams but when he got older he had he had developed the gift of dream interpretation because um it's it's a fascinating story joseph was um he was young he was favored by his dad because Joseph's mother was his father, Jacob. Jacob's true love was Rachel. And uh, Rachel had uh, Joseph and Joseph's brother, Benjamin. So those two were favored by the father, by uh, Jacob. So his brothers hated him. Joseph's brothers hated him because they knew that he was the apple of their father's eye. And um, so Joseph would have dreams and Joseph would tell his brothers, I had a dream that you know, we were all out in the field, we were gathering corn, and then my corn, my corn stalk rose up, and your corn stalks lowered, and they bowed to me, and so his brothers, who clearly were, they had the gift of dream interpretation, but they hated Joseph so much, they didn't realize that they, of their own gifts of dream interpretation, but they were like, what you mean, we gonna bow to you, you know, one of these days, what, what you think, you gonna rule over us or something, because you know and joseph he was young he didn't he didn't know what the dreams meant he was just like i'm just telling you i had a dream i don't even know what it means is, is that what i mean okay so um all that to say throughout the story of joseph all of his dreams came true he was a great ruler one day and his family did have to bow to him he was the king of egypt or second in command in egypt and his family ended up his brothers they sold him into slavery and they uh, met up with him probably like 17 years later. And, you know, Joseph had grown into a man at that point. They And his brothers didn't recognize him, but Joseph recognized his brothers. And so, um, anyway, it's very fascinating. But it's so many stories in the Bible about how God speaks to us in our dreams. As a matter of fact, it says so in Job. Uh, I'm going to pull that up for you. It's in the book of Job, Job 33, 14, and I'm going to pull it up. Uh, let me just read a couple of scriptures behind it. Actually, I'll read that. Job 33, verse 14 says, For God speaketh, uh, this is the King James Version, but I'll just read the New King James Version, and it says, For God may speak in one way, or in another, yet man does not perceive it. 
3315. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when dream falls upon men while slumbering in their beds. God speaks to us in our dreams. Then he opens the ears of men and seals their instruction. So he's speaking in a dream and um, in a dream, he's, you know, the, the scripture is saying that God speaks to us in our dreams and he speaks to us when we're awake, but we don't really perceive it. So he comes to us in dreams um, and he seals his instructions to us in our dreams. Then he opens the ears of men and seals their instruction. That was 16 in order to turn man from his deed and conceal it. Um, so in order to turn man from, so if it's something that you're doing or something you need to be aware of, God will speak to you in your dreams in order to turn you away from evil. Or if it's a path you're getting ready to follow, follow down, he'll speak to you in your dreams and be like, Hey, if you do this, this is what's going to happen. Don't do that. So oftentimes God will speak to us in a dream. Abraham, um, God spoke to Abraham about how he was going to become the father of many nations. And um, that's in the book of Genesis. And Abraham is like, uh, God, I'm like a hundred. And Sarah is 90 years old. How is that going to happen? But it did end up happening. Uh, Sarah ended up having uh, Isaac, um, the who is what God, Isaac had Jacob. Then Jacob is Joseph. I just got to talking about Joseph, Joseph's father. So, God speaks to us in our dreams. So with me having these reoccurring dreams, sexual, I knew that something was behind it. That's my childhood. This is why it's important to train your children up so that when they become older, you know, if the Bible says train a child in a way in which he shall, in which he is to go. And uh, when he, be, when he becomes grown, he shall not depart from it. So I didn't, I remembered, well, I mean, I, I basically remembered my teachings from when I was a child to know that dreams are important. So I went to search for dream interpretation. And the more I searched for dream interpretation, the more I realized that it's a lot of witchcraft interpretation out there, which is why I modified my search to biblical dream interpretation, because it was so many sites I came upon that um, I, and I, realize i'm like this is not biblical this is not godly i need godly interpretation so um if you so guys when you search for interpretation of your dreams biblical christian dream interpretation what does this symbol mean one thing i came across this man kevin la ewing i'll link his uh youtube in in the in my description box he was amazing he helped me to understand what the um dream of me being in my childhood home the reoccurring dream be constantly being in my childhood home means that more than likely it's the spirit of backwardness because you know you, you don't live there anymore that part of your life is already over and done you don't live there anymore so um and especially with me being in school and not graduating, it's a spirit of, it's a blockage, a spirit of backwardness, anti-progress. Um, you know, you've already been to high school. You've already been to elementary school. That's a part of your life that you've already completed. So um, especially with you being unable to graduate, then it's signifying that there is something, something spiritually, something in your spiritual life that's blocking progress, hindering progress, you being unable to graduate or move on to the next level. So I was like, and I took a good long look at my life up until that point, you know, and I'm just like, wow, this makes a lot of sense because, uh, you know, it just seemed like no matter what I put my hand to at one point, it, it just, you know, it just would not come to pass i couldn't complete anything i would start school stop start school stop and then um as far as the sexual dreams go and i love him because i love kevin's teachings because he i mean he's totally by scripture it's totally biblical so i pulled up um i started researching sexual dreams and that's when i discovered what a spirit spouse or a spirit that calls itself your spouse is all that to say here we are with this teaching that's what that's what got me to this point so i've been meaning to do this teaching for a while because i've had a lot of people reach out to me on social media like hey this fibroids and spirituality are they connected and the answer to that is absolutely 
absolutely they are absolutely connected um so i began uh i learned that when a spirit comes to have sex with you in your dreams it means that you're already married in your dream i learned i mean you're already married in the spirit I learned so much about these spirits and how dangerous they are and how vicious they are and how, um, yeah, just how dangerous and vicious they are. So, uh, spirits, a uh, spirit spouse hails from, I learned a lot about the spiritual realm. You got the physical realm, which is this body, this flesh, the flesh, the body that you're in, everything you see, uh, your home outside, that's the physical but the spiritual exists and um, the spiritual realm, that's the, that's the, the part of, that's the world that you can't see because you're physical. You only see that world in your dreams. When you go to bed and you go to sleep, you are officially in the spiritual realm at that point because your body is physically laying there in the bed, but your spirit is interacting with the spiritual realm at that point. So, um, if you're in one of the one thing also I kept dreaming about is me being in water. I kept dreaming about me swimming in water. At one point, I even had a dream where I was swimming in water. It was like it was like my elementary school had flooded and I was swimming through the water in the elementary school. And it was these hands in the water, these arms that was drag, trying to drag me down. Like they would grab my leg as I swam by them, but I kicked my leg and kicked them off and I'm just swimming. So I would always have dreams of me swimming or being in water. Spirit spouses come from a, a part of the demonic satanic kingdom. Cause there are two kingdoms. There's the kingdom of light and there's the kingdom of darkness. God is the kingdom of light. You got God, you got Jesus, you got the angels. That is the kingdom of light. Then you got the kingdom of darkness. There's Satan, his um, demons and um, uh, and things of that nature. That's the kingdom of darkness. In each of these kingdoms, there are different parts. Okay, so you got in the in the demonic, and so in the satanic kingdom, there are different um, there are different kingdoms within the entire satanic kingdom and one of those kingdoms is the marine kingdom which is um water water demons water spirits spirits that live in water this is true uh because spirits there are spirits that roam the earth uh and there are spirits that are in water and so uh with me keep kept i kept dreaming that i'm swimming or i'm in water somehow and i realized that or i i i read books got educated and realized that they're part of the marine kingdom and so the way that these spirits can get into your life is uh via a covenant with your i touched on that earlier it's a covenant with your your grandparents or your parents um maybe they were witches or warlocks and and or they could possibly have sold your destiny to an altar here's an example of how they could have done that let me tell you a little bit of a story. Let's say, um, let's say your dad who, or your grandfather, who is the head of the household, you know, especially if you're an African American. So, you know, um, back then things were very difficult for men of color. So, um, let's say your dad or your grandparent, let's say your dad, your dad had a very difficult time just uh financially no matter what he did he wasn't able to financially sustain his family he would get a job the job would fire him um he would try to save something comes up that would deplete his savings the car would crash so he have to deplete all of his savings and um uh, get the car fixed or something like that so it was always something so he gets desperate, and um, so he's talking to a friend of his. Man, I don't know what to do. You know, I, I need some money to be able to take care of my family. I don't know what to do. I'm just desperate. The friend say, hey, you know, you can go see uh, this person. I know this person who will be able to help you with that, and all your financial problems will be cured. Dad is a little curious. Dad is like, who is this person? Friend is like, okay, 
this person is Madame Shizza or something. She lived, you know, down here on Drury Lane. Oh, you go see her and see what she's talking about. Dad goes to see Miss um, Shizza. And so dad is telling Miss Shizza, you know, what's going on in his life, about his struggles and stuff. And Miss Shizza decides that, okay, I can help you with that. We can, we can get you financially stable, but here's what you need to do. In order to do so, I'm going to need payment and not just money. I need something that is um, going to help tie your destiny to that of prosperity. So uh, you have to make some type of sacrifice and not just paying me my wages, but a uh, sacrifice is needed. So if you were to give me a picture of maybe the child that you love most or give me some of their hair or their, their nail clippings or maybe a shirt of theirs um, or something like that, then um, you can then I can, you know, do what I need to do in order to bring the spirit of prosperity into your life. Dad's totally ignorant. So dad does just that. He goes and gets. um maybe a, a, a some hair of his favorite child or nail clipping or picture uh, and bring that to Madame Shizza and Madame and leave it there. Madame Shizza is like, okay, I got what I need. I'll, you know, I'll call you. So Madame Shizza calls dad within a couple of days or a week or so. And dad goes back to see Madame Shizza. Madame Shizza is like, okay, you're done. So now from this point on, you should be able to see that jobs come easy for you, that, um, you know, you have great businesses and everything in your life is going to be peachy at this point. Not dad is happy. He's excited, not realizing that he just sold his child to the spirit of darkness. And so, um, so dad does, dad is all of a sudden, exactly as Madam Shiz, I said, everything comes true. Uh, they never want for any food. They never want for anything they They become prosperous. Dad can maintain a job. Now everything is great for dad, but this kid, this kid grows up not knowing anything about what dad does. And this kid finds it really really hard to make it in life this kid is talented this kid is attractive this kid is smart this kid has everything in the world going for him or her but somehow some way nothing ever seems to work out for this kid why is that that's because this kid's destiny his this kid's um purpose has been sold on the altar of the kingdom of darkness because dad wanted to have a way to provide for his family. So he sacrificed, literally sacrificed his child, but dad has no knowledge of this. And Madam Shizar didn't explain this to dad. That's how covenants work. And so, uh, the history repeats itself. This kid finds it really hard to, you know, difficult to thrive in life the kid may have a kid. That kid finds it really hard and difficult to thrive in life because the the covenant that was forged in your bloodline, starting with your father. And that's another thing. I began to dream about a certain family member over and over and over and over and over again, which lets me know. And then the more I begin to study, the more I begin to realize this person is is the reason why I'm not prospering, you know, I, I, this person is the reason why my destiny has been sold to evil. I just knew it, you know, and so it was confirmed or I, the Lord confirmed it to me. And so, uh, all that to say, that's how covenants work. Uh, that's one way how the Marine kingdom or, um, the spirit that calls itself your spouse that's one way how they can gain access to your life uh because when your destiny is sold at an altar um the spirit of failure or you know your you, your destiny is just completely up for grabs it, it, the door to your life is open for all kinds of evil spirits to flow through your life 
Another way a spirit that calls itself your spouse can gain access to your life is um, if you were ever sexually assaulted, raped, molested, um, if you've ever dealt with any type of sexual iniquity, such as fornication, such as, um, um, you know, all, 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 of, all of those things. All of those things is how um, a, a marine kingdom spirits can gain access or in any spirit really can gain access into your life. Because, you know, if someone rapes you, then, you know, you're you're being forced to have sex against your will. And so a lot of times what happens to men or women after they're raped is they, uh, you know, that that door to their life has been open and evil evil spirits very often if not always enter their lives um via an assault like that so a lot of times um a lot of people will wind up gay or a lot of people will wind up um promiscuous um just kind of loose will sleep with anyone um, they maybe dress provocatively because that doorway, that door has been opened for their spirit to enter. So that's really one of the most common ways that a spirit spouse will enter your life. Those are some, those two are some of the most common ways that a spirit, a, a spouse that calls itself your spirit or a spirit that calls itself your spouse will enter your life. Uh, they also uh, are very prevalent in areas where there's an abundance of water. I live in uh, I live in Tennessee, and so I do live near an area where there is a large body of water. Also, keep in mind, I told you that I live in front of a lake, um, and uh, so and, and I would have dreams about that as well. Be uh, in a lake, I would have dreams about how dirty and defiled the water was, and I'm like. The lake doesn't look like that when I wake up. It doesn't look like that. In my dreams, I see a totally different lake. It's totally different. It's, it's, it's as brown as the couch behind me. It's so muddy and murky. And um, But I, you know, over time, education-wise, I grew to realize that, huh, okay. So that's what this is. This water is defiled. And so, um, so in areas where you may see a large body of water, which is... Um, Miami or Florida or uh, California or places like that. This is where marine kingdom spirits, this is where spirits that call themselves your spouses, this is where they, they live. So you may see a lot of uh, sexual iniquity, people walking around with, you know, without a whole lot of clothes on and uh, just the crime rate is just incredibly insane and things like that. So, um, that's just a little bit of backstory about spirits that call themselves your spouse. So, so yeah. And uh, back to fibroids. Fibroids is an example of a generational curse. Um, fibroids, because a generational curse is something that happens down in your bloodline, which is a lot of reasons why in the physical, doctors will ask you, uh, do you have any um, heart problems in your family. Does anyone in your family have diabetes? Those are examples of generational curses because we've seen it time and time again. Well, my mother had cancer. My grandmother had cancer. My great grandmother had cancer. Those are curses that's traveling in, down in the bloodline. And until someone comes along and break those curses, they will continue to travel down the bloodline down to the fourth generation and even when it gets to a point where the um where it's going to expire where the curse is going to expire you know those those curses and those covenants they don't want to let you go they do not want to let you go so nine times out of ten if it gets down to the fourth or fifth generation where it's getting ready to expire someone would do something else to reestablish that curse or that covenant to keep that spirit the cursed spirit in your bloodline um, someone may, you know, the, the fifth generation person may be experiencing such hardship. You know, you've seen your grandmother, you've seen your mother, your grandmother, your great grandmother, your sisters, you've seen all of them have this curse that where, you know, no one will marry them. Well, they, they have kids out of wedlock and you're determined not to follow in their footsteps. So you decide to go see this, um, 
enchantress who can fix it so that, you know, men will love you and want to marry you, which is dabbling in the witchcraft. This is just an example. Thereby reestablishing the covenant to run rampant in your bloodline. You know, so it's always something to try to keep that covenant there. But, um, and so as far as fibroids go, uh, let's go back. I remember uh, listening to a teacher or well, speaker a pastor who was saying that actually his name was uh dr St uh stephen darby s-t-e-p-h-e-n darby and i'll link that video hopefully i can find it but i'll link it in the description box but uh he he's he was very insightful very very informative about his teachings about spirituality and witchcraft and things of that nature but he said that uh, black uh, women, especially black women, more than likely almost always have a spirit spouse, and this is because um, this is because of women who are of African descent. Uh, remember, I told you that a lot of our ancestors practiced heavily in witchcraft uh, before we were brought over. Before our ancestors were brought over to the Americas uh, against their will. In Africa, they were practicing witchcraft, which honestly goes with the biblical story of, you know, how if you worship other gods and practice other gods, then you shall be cursed. How God will strip you of your land. You know, you have children, but they will be taken away from you into captivity. You will produce all of this fruit and stuff, but you will partake in none of it. It goes back to Deuteronomy. So um, if you, the, the one of the biggest things that God hates is idolatry and having other gods before him because he said that i am a jealous god thou shalt have no other gods before me so if you are practicing or if you have another god then god is going to turn you over to them he's going to turn you over to them if you have a covenant with uh the dark kingdom god honors covenants he's going to turn you over to them unless you break the covenant and you come back to him it even says so if my people let me i'm gonna pull up the scripture and the scripture says, um, let me pull it up real quick. Okay, this is Second Chronicles. This is the King James Version. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. So he's basically saying, you know, if you're practicing and dabbling in witchcraft and if you will turn from your wicked ways, renounce those gods, turn back to him, pray. And the, and the Bible is littered, littered with scriptures saying, you know, how God will forgive his people if they just turn from those gods, renounce them, turn back to him and rededicate themselves to rededicate their lives to him. Then he'll forgive all of that. Now, the thing is. Once you tie yourself to these gods, to these covenants, if you've ever dabbled in witchcraft before, whether knowingly or unknowingly, because I dabbled in witchcraft, but I didn't know it. I didn't know I was dabbling in witchcraft. I had no idea. Um, I never had a Ouija board or anything, but um, first of all, I renounced God. I renounced his son, Jesus, and um, I would get into a lot of studies like reiki is reiki reiki and um and astral projecting i never astral projected but i would i would get into a lot of new ageism new age uh teachings and stuff like that which is all witchcraft um so stuff like that it, it just be you know totally innocent stuff that you don't really think about but that's how the enemy works he doesn't play fair he's sneaky he, he he knows the laws of God. He knows the rules. He knows the laws. And he knows that if he can get you to disobey the laws of the Lord, then he got you. He can bring anything into your life. And God will do nothing to stop him because the word, because it's, it's written that God cannot be a liar. He said that if you serve other gods, if you worship other gods, then he basically will turn you over to those gods, which is what I read in Deuteronomy. I read to you in Deuteronomy 28, you'll be cursed. So all this to say, um, so our uh, ancestors were, you know, cursed. They, they practiced witchcraft 
and you know they brought over here in uh the america in america and you know they had no knowledge of christianity all they did was you know you 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 see these these you know these these white people and they're reading out of the bible as they torment and torture these people torture you know black people and so of course you know uh black people grow to distrust the bible even these days even nowadays there's so many other people so many people going back to worshiping their ancestors and african teaching and but what they fail to realize is that all of this stuff that our ancestors were worshiping back in the day was witchcraft and um so be careful with that be careful with all of that so anyway um african history is before slavery is deeply embedded in witchcraft not in christ which is um, why a lot of black women, because uh, with fibroids, it's so prevalent. Fibroids are so prevalent in the African-American community. So many black women, it seems to be predominantly affected by fibroids. And so that spiritually is one of the reasons. It's because, uh, now th that's not to say that other races don't practice witchcraft either. That's not to say that you know, uh, Asians or Caucasians or any other, um, is, uh, um, Native Americans that they don't practice witchcraft either because they 100% do honestly, you know, um, but with African American women, especially with Africa, uh, uh, being where it is, there's so many African teachers out there and you really have to be careful who you listen to and follow because a lot of them still, teach a lot of ungodly principles and practices as well but with a lot of african-american uh teachings they they teach all the time about how uh the queen of the coast and the marine kingdom how it's very prevalent in their community and how um a lot of us have those spouses um those those spirits that cause themselves our spouses and even the bible talks about how in the bible uh, fallen angels took daughters of men, um, uh, daughters of men, which is uh, human women, and had sex with them and produced babies, um, produced babies with them. So, and when you're having sex in your dreams, you know, these angels, these are fallen angels, which are demons, as it says in the Bible. Um, and even in my dreams, I could see like these these babies and um like i had a dream once where i was in my bedroom my current bedroom and uh, it was like i just had a baby and all the time i would see these babies they'd be deformed somehow um like this one time i had a dream i saw this baby where like it looked like a baby but their 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 torso looked like that of a dog uh, uh like it looked like like the, the the female, how they have their little teats instead of having two breasts as women, they have they had teats like like a dog, like you know one teat like six seven eight teats like a female dog, and then um and 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 then they had the genital genital area of a a, a male puppy. You could see their you know you could see that it was like a male puppy. So the babies were always deformed in the dreams. This stuff is real, y'all. And so, um, one thing I learned is that when you're having sex in your dream, this demon is introducing all kinds of, of, um, of, of spiritual pollution into you. It's defiling your spirit, which will eventually lead to physical manifestations of this stuff. So, um, and for those of you who may be wondering, you know, where does it say this stuff in the Bible? Let me pull up a scripture. Uh, this is Matthew 13, 25 through 40. Uh, this is the King James Version. It says, but while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up, that's, that means when the wheat, when the wheat grew and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder come unto him and says, Sir, did thou not sow good seeds in thy field? 
from whence did it have its tear? So, sir, didn't you put good seeds out in this field? Where did these tares come from? Where, where, what is this? Where are these weeds? And he, which is the householder, said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Will thou then that we go and gather them up? So the servants are asking the householder, you know, the householder said an enemy did this. And the servants are like, okay, well, do you want us to go and gather the evil terrors up then? And then he, which is the householder, said unto them, and, um, nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the weed with them. Let them both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tares and then bind them into bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. This is a parable that Jesus is telling uh, the disciples. So the Bible is full of parables. Jesus tell like, um, like a story to make his point to make points of uh, rules that we should and should not do or to make, um, to drive a point home. So you may not see in the Bible where it says, if a spirit comes to sleep with you, then that's a spirit spouse, but parables. So Jesus, just like Jesus told this parable, basically what it's saying is when you're asleep, or when you're caught off guard, when you're asleep, that's when the enemy comes at you when you're vulnerable. He comes at you when you're vulnerable to sow evil into your life. And then once he does that, he go on about his way. But then later on, the same seeds that he sowed will begin eventually begin to manifest in your life. And you begin to wonder, where did this come from? And just like the householder was like, an enemy did this. You begin to see that the manifestations of what was done in your dream while men slept or what was done in your dream come to pass in your physical life. So the enemy doesn't play fair, especially if you're married or if you're single. So the enemy knows that one of God's uh, laws is thou shall not commit adultery. That's one of the Ten Commandments. You should not commit adultery. It's number seven. Um, neither shall thou have any idols or anything like that. So, especially if you're married, if you're having sex in the dream and you're married, even if this spirit takes on the form of your spouse, even if the spirit looks like your spouse, that's not your spouse you're having sex with. Your spouse is laying in the bed right next to you. That's not your spouse. That's a spirit disguised as your spouse come into sow a covenant once you have sex with this demon in your dream a covenant is being forged you're giving this 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 spirit permission whether you realize it or not whether you're it's still a covenant being being forged just like i mentioned covenants and how they're forged on altars covenants can be forged just like that you think you're making love to your your spouse um, but you're not. You're making love to a, what is called a familiar spirit or masquerading spirit, masquerading as your spouse. And so uh, this spirit does so to come to you, to have sex with you, to sow evil into your life, whether it's spiritually. Um, and since this is a spirit, it can it sows it sows that seed spiritually, but it can manifest physically the spiritual realm is the parent world of the physical world that means that the spiritual world precedes anything that happens in this earth anything that happens in this earth it began in the spiritual realm first so sickness began in the spiritual realm first maybe um i don't know you guys have, may have heard stories about um how someone had a dream that uh, a, 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 a son of a friend was going to be killed and only for that dream to come true a few days later. Well, you it started in the spiritual realm. Um, you saw it first before it happened in the physical realm. That's how it works. We as human beings started spiritually before we became physical. And so um, that's, that's how it works. So... <sighs> so with you having sex in your dream, like I said, the enemy doesn't play fair. 
If you're not having sex with your actual spouse, that means that you're having sex with something else, which means that you're breaking the law of the Lord. You're committing adultery at this point because you're not having sex with your your spouse, your, your, your husband or your wife. It's not them. So you're married in the physical realm. Then who are you having sex with? That means you're committing adultery, which means that the enemy has access to your life at this point. He does not play fair. The Bible says that my people perish because they lack knowledge. And it is through knowledge that the just shall be delivered. These are two separate scriptures. This is what the Bible says. This is why knowledge is important. It is through knowledge that the just shall be delivered. That means that once you get educated, once you be, once you learn the wiles of Satan, once you learn how he operates, once you learn the rules of the word of the Bible and you know, I can't do this because if I do this, if I break this law, just like God says in Deuteronomy 28, curses can come upon me. Devil has legal access into my life at this point, which is why I'm speaking about these spirits to come to have sex with you in your dreams. Um, even if you're single, you, even if you're single, if you're single, then you're committing fornication. You're having sex in your dreams. This is fornication at this point. We all know how, uh, how God feels about fornication. The Bible is full of scriptures against fornication. Do not do it. Marriage, uh, sex is for married couples only. So if you're having sex in a dream, this is why sex in a dream is never, ever, ever a good dream ever. This demon that's disguising themselves, man, this beautiful lady that you're seeing in your dreams, it may not even be a beautiful lady. It, it may even just be a lady that, that comes and have sex with you and you um, ejaculate. A covenant has been forged. And not only has a covenant been forged, but um, your, your likeness, your, sper your semen, your sperm has spiritually been con connect uh, collected to put on an altar. A spiritual altar to be used against you, to be used against your wife, your children, which could bring about barrenness in your wife. And the same thing with ladies. If you're having sex in your dream, your your essence is being uh, collected to put on a spiritual altar to be used against you. This can bring about barrenness. This can bring about fibroids because, again, the enemy comes and sows evil. While men slip, the enemy comes and sows evil tears. Um, uh, and goes about his way so once you're sleeping this enemy comes and have sex with you but he's sowing evil into your life so while he's having sex with you um he may ejaculate in you it, it, you may even wake up and feel violated as you should because um this demon has uh he, he's defiled you spiritually so spiritually uh, physically, it shows up as fibroids, any type of uh, of, of reproductive issues, fibroids, barrenness, uh, polyps, picos, endometriosis, uh, cancer, um, uh, all of these things that, that happens with the reproductive system. This enemy comes and sows these evil tears in your sleep. So this is how fibroids are formed with uh via a spirit spouse or a spouse that calls itself uh, a spirit that calls itself your spouse this is how these things are forged in the uh in the in, in spiritually before it manifests physically so i know what you guys may be thinking some of you guys may be wondering okay what can i do about this First of all, you have to start remembering your dreams. Some of you who are watching this may be like, I don't dream. You dream. Everyone dreams. If you think that you're a person who don't dream, it's because um, that's another uh, manifestation of the, the dark kingdom. They're snatching away the spirits. The evil spirits are snatching away your dreams. Witchcraft spirits are snatching away your dreams before you wake up. Because the Bible is, talks about it all the time about um how we dream this is how god communicates with us this is how the enemy communicates with us as well dreams give you an insight as to what's going on in the spiritual realm so that you're able to head it off or address it and by head it off i mean if you like let's say you go to bed tonight and you dream that you're having sex in the dream you wake up you're like oh my god uh a spirit came and defiled me in my sleep 
go on a fast or maybe a one day uh one day fast uh a, a three day dry fast depending on how depending on what it is if you just had this dream out the blue then uh maybe a three day dry fast or maybe even a one day fast and pray scriptures against it um i have plenty of prayers which i will link in my description box or i'll put it on my website um for you guys these prayers um i'll just you could just speak scripture scripture because the word says that the word of god is sharper than any double-edged sword piercing asunder uh um dividing spirit and soul and dividing joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and your heart so what that means is the word of god is so powerful that it's able to set you free from any spirit evil spirit that comes to you to try to defile you or to try to um attack you in any way so uh you speak the word of god against it it is um christ is my bridegroom there's a scripture that says that uh christ is my bridegroom i am not married to any evil spirit christ is my bridegroom in the spiritual realm and if you are married in the physical realm speak your spouse's name and um travis is my husband or uh nicole is my wife speak 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 the truth uh speak the truth it is written that um that uh what is it the you know speak speak the truth what we uh be remain sober and vigilant um because your enemy the devil walks around as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour if you don't have knowledge he can the, the enemy will devour you you're easy to pray for him especially if you live in a life of christianity you are already his target he already hates you but if you're serving the enemy then nine times out of ten you know he'll he'll leave you alone he'll go easy on you he'll leave you alone but if you're a christian and you lack knowledge you don't read your bible you don't listen to any like deliverance videos and and stuff that really teaches you about covenants and and how to break curses and generational and ancestral curses you easy prey he'll swallow you whole the attacks upon a christian who really 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 walks by and live by the word of god is different from a christian who's lukewarm they don't really read the Bible. They don't really, you know, they, they believe in God. They believe in Jesus. They believe, you know, they, they, they even declare Jesus as his savior, but they don't really walk that real Christianity walk. You know, they're lukewarm. They're a little worldly. They accept worldly views, stuff like that. The, the attacks between a person who is really living for Christ and a Christian who is, you know, just, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm those attacks are going to be different and the uh the attacks on a person's life who isn't living for god you know they're 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 already doing uh, the satan's work for for him by destroying their own life you know they may be drug addicts they may be someone who can't who do petty crime someone who can't stay out of jail you know the enemy his work is done with them they don't believe in god they they're they're wild they're rootless you know so he has different, the enemy has different levels of, of attack upon, I mean, for it, for all of us. So, um, if you are, you know, you're a Christian, if you're not a Christian, then give your life to God so that you can be set free. Um, if you're, if you are a Christian, then go deeper into your Christianity, start to read the word and study the word, listen to people who can break the Bible down for you. Cause I used to think the Bible was the, one of the driest, most boring books that I'd ever read. And I love to read, but for, I just could not get into the Bible, the, 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 the language, the poetic wording of it. I couldn't understand it. I couldn't get revelation from it. So I had to get help in that area. It's no excuse that it's boring. It's no excuse that you 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 know it's you don't understand it. There's no excuse because God says my people perish for a lack of knowledge. It says that in Hosea, the book of Hosea, it doesn't matter if you don't understand the Bible. You are responsible for gaining some type of understanding of it. You are responsible for 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 living uh for following god's laws you are responsible for understanding your enemy so that you the so you can know how he attacks 
what type of methods he used. You are responsible for finding out what type of curses you may be under in your bloodline. You are responsible for all of that because, you know, you have the resources. Back in the day, our ancestors didn't have those type of resources. They didn't have computers. They didn't have internet. They didn't have any of that. Um, they didn't have YouTube. They didn't have any of that. Nowadays, it's no excuse. Just because you don't understand it doesn't mean that you just leave it alone. Find you someone who follow who does understand the word and who's able to break it down to you. One person, Kevin L.A. Ewing, he's awesome. Another person is um, Anointed Fire. I'll link her YouTube. Um, all of these YouTubes, I'll link them in the description box. So this is just a basic introductory um, video of how fibroids are tied to the spiritual realm and how um sexual dreams and how ancestral and generational curses incur or, or how they um how they how they come to be in our lives because even with fibroids in the physical realm no one really knows how fibroids where they come from how it starts we're just now really beginning to understand physically that um you know the hormones go all out of whack and um yes physically fibroids uh there are some things that you can do physically that doesn't help with uh the healing of fibroids such as your diet stress levels um and uh things like that so but spiritually they originate spiritually and i just told you or just hopefully you have an understanding of how fibroids originate spiritually if you guys have any questions about this video about some of the things i spoke about then please 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 send me a message um i will do more videos on this i will do more teachings on this i will um then just just i'll, I'll do whatever it takes to help you guys get free so um i love you guys thank y'all so much for watching and until the next video i'll see y'all later Bye bye